It's time now for us to dive into cloud service models, something I'm sure you've heard a lot about in the industry. And before we jump into infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, all these you know, PaaS, SaaS acronyms that you hear about, I thought it'd be good to kind of show you this one slide, first of all, just pizza as a service. And this came from a LinkedIn post from Albert Barron at IBM. And I thought this was just a great way for you to think about the, you know, as a service concept that is sweeping the, the industry right now. And if you look on the left-hand side, you know, when you basically get a pizza and you make it at home, uh, you're responsible for everything. You have to buy the cheese, the tomato sauce, you know, the pizza dough, you make the fire or, you know, heat up the oven, whatever you do, you're responsible for the electric, the gas, you know, you put it on your own dining room table and you, you know, provide your own Coke or Sprite to whatever it is that, that you want to you know, a company with your pizza, and that's your making at home. You're responsible for everything. Uh, as you move along, and we look at something like take and bake, uh, here you basically are going to a store and picking up a maybe a frozen pizza or one of these freshly prepared ones for you to just take home. Um, you're still responsible for your oven or your fire, depending on how you're going to cook it, uh, but you're not responsible now for the toppings, the tomato sauce, the pizza dough. That's already been prepared for you. As we continue to move up the stack, so to speak, and this will become clear as we relate this to IT terms in a minute, uh, now we have pizza delivered. Again, I'm responsible for less things now. All I have to do now is provide a dining room table uh, and perhaps some soda if I'm going to you know, serve a drink and that's not being delivered with the pizza. Um, but the delivery company, such as a Domino's or one of the other big ones, takes care of everything else. And then finally, my last option, all in, uh, dined out, you know, complete as a service. I'm going to a restaurant and everything is provided provided for me. Now let's relate that to IT service models as it pertains to cloud today. Well, first of all, we have our traditional, and if we think about this, this is in our data center. You know, we used to provision, you know, very large data centers. We still do in a lot of hybrid scenarios. Uh, but let's say we put in a workload on premises in that data center, you're responsible for everything. The networking, the storage, the servers, virtualization, maybe you've got a VMware layer there. You're still responsible for the operating system, Windows or Linux, some middleware that runs on top of there, some runtime that runs on top of there, uh, the data and, you know, the applications as a whole. So you're responsible for the entire stack, you know, right down to the, the data center itself, including like the power, the cooling, everything else that's in there. If we move over to infrastructure as a service, this is where we start to build some dividing lines between what our vendor manages and what we manage. So if we look at it this way, if we do an infrastructure as a service in the cloud, so in say a public cloud provider, we're expecting you know Microsoft or if we were in Amazon Web Services, Amazon would provide the networking, the storage, the servers, the virtualization layer for us, and we essentially consume from that. Um, so if we do an infrastructure as a service, we still typically are put in an operating system, you know, on top of what the cloud provider is given us. So we're responsible for the operating system and everything above that that runs on our OS. Take it up another level to platform as a service. Again, less and less uh, of the items in the stack we are now responsible for. The big one here being the big benefit of platform as a service uh, is the fact that we don't have to manage an operating system. Enterprises spend a lot of time you know, maintaining Windows, Linux, patching vulnerabilities in those operating systems when really they want to focus on just running their applications. And if you can offload some of that to your vendor, uh, that's really one of the big benefits that PaaS or platform as a service provides. And then finally, we have software as a service where everything is provided for us. Uh, don't get me wrong, you still um, have to manage your data and the applications in some of these SaaS you know, services. So if you take like a ServiceNow or Salesforce is a great example where you know, you're know you going in there and doing all your lead generation and sales generation activities there, um, you're still, you know, entering data in there, um, but you're not responsible for the application itself. Salesforce is a good example, ServiceNow is another, are completely managed for you when you choose the, the SaaS versions of those applications. So you can quickly see the, the benefits there, and sometimes you pay more for PaaS services and SaaS services, that's fairly typical. The vendor might add on a, a premium because they're providing and managing all these things for you, but the benefits to your business are immense because you don't really have to worry about those things. You can focus on what actually makes your business money if you're not in the business of IT. Now, before we end off here, and we are going to hit back on these a little bit later on, uh, it's helpful to think about some of the common scenarios. So when we think about infrastructure as a service, this is typically used for migrating workloads, maybe lifting and shifting VMs from on-premises into the cloud. Could be for test and development where we spin up workloads and spin it down. Maybe we don't want to you know, have the CapEx investment to always have VMs running all the time. Website hosting, storage backup and recovery are kind of good examples there. Now, PaaS, on the other hand, think about it in a couple of ways. 
One, it could be that we're using PaaS services as a development framework. Uh, so this essentially allows the developers to code their app and run it on the PaaS platform. Good examples of those are like Pivotal, Cloud Foundry, and things like app services that run in Azure as well. And then you've got other rich PaaS services, more like managed services like business intelligence, analytics, uh, some of the IoT services that are out there that are kind of all in and providing you a lot more you know, capabilities. You use those PaaS services to get more insights perhaps from your, your applications. And then SaaS, you know, another good one just to end off would be like Office 365, Skype, you know, I mentioned kind of, you know, Salesforce and service now already. So try to think of it in those terms. Infrastructure as a service, still like your VMs that you typically build, PaaS, richer application you know, services available, and SaaS kind of all in. And always try to contrast it to the, the traditional model if you're taking one of the Microsoft exams.